put your hands together. I know there are some thankful people in this room all today. And some thankful people who are watching this morning. God has been so good. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing us together once again. We thank you for the new mercy that we've experienced already on this day, for the grace and the favor that you've given to us. Thank you for a place to be able to assemble together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to lift up your name together one more time. We truly say thank you. Thank you for this privilege to look into your word. We ask your blessings upon us now. Touch our hearts, touch our minds. Give to us a life-changing word. Change us for the better. Strengthen us, encourage us. And as we change, we promise God that we will give to you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ that we pray and we preach. Let the people of God say amen. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. Let's give God praise. We're truly, truly, truly thankful to God for all that he has done. I want to invite you uh, very quickly to a familiar passage of scripture that we want to revisit and uh, look at a little more closely on today, Psalm 103. If you'll turn there, Psalm 103. And um, as we come to the end of this month, this month we've been talking about gratitude and thankfulness in the month of November. As we close out this month, this passage of scripture has been placed on our hearts for us to reflect on and to think about not only today, but the days to come. I'm going to read this from the King James Version. Uh, Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What a powerful verse, verses of scripture. Look at your neighbor, give him a smile. Can you do that real quick? Look at him, give him a smile. That's the fakest smile I've seen. Give him a real smile and just say to him, let's bless the Lord. And just in case that neighbor didn't do it, turn on the other side, the person standing on the other side, look at him, give him a smile. Look at him and say, let's bless the Lord. You may take your seats. The Psalms are filled with um, stories that many of us uh, can identify with. They are filled with uh, stories that contain a lot of emotion. And at the same time, they are packed with uh, stories that empower. Reading the Psalms is like going on a roller coaster ride. <laughs> You're going up, and then sometimes you're going down. It's like a roller coaster ride because you're going around curves and you're going with with speed, and sometimes you feel like you're about to fall off, but somehow you still are able to hang on and hang in there. The Psalms are filled with um, a lot of stories uh, of people's misery. But in addition to that, there are also miracles in the Psalms. Psalms talk about the troubles that people face, but there's also the triumph that is experienced. 
The Psalms talk about the valleys, and we hear many of the Psalm writers sharing their complaints. But there's also in the Psalms this ideal that we make it to the mountaintop. And when we make it to the mountaintop, there is celebration. When one reads and studies the psalm, it's clear that the writers of the psalm have made up in their mind that they're not going to live in the valley of complaint, but they are going to live on the mountaintop of victory and celebration. And I think this morning, that's where some of us are today. We have made up our mind that we are not going to live in the valley of complaint. <laughs> We're not going to spend the rest of our days complaining about things, but we are going to move to the mountaintop and we are going to celebrate. The psalmist understood that victory comes from God and the psalm writers were clear, they made it clear. They said, we are going to choose to celebrate this God who gives us victory. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody here who's willing to celebrate the God who gives us victory? Can you put your hands together and give God praise if you know he gives you the victory? That's what's happening in the text this morning. The writer of this psalm, this familiar psalm, makes it clear what he is going to do, and he is encouraging others to do the same thing. It's a familiar psalm. I'm going to look at it a little bit more closely, but notice what he says in verse 1 of the King James Version. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He's, he's clear as to what he is going to do. He is going to bless the Lord. The Hebrew word for bless really means to kneel. It means to kneel down. It means to, to recognize. It means to acknowledge. And what the writer is saying in the text is, I'm going to kneel. I'm going to acknowledge. I'm going to recognize God. It, it, it is clear that this writer says God is someone who should be recognized. I should humble myself when I'm in his presence. He's someone that I should acknowledge. In all of my ways, I should acknowledge him. And so the word bless means to kneel and to recognize and to acknowledge. It, it, it gives preference to the position that a person is holding. It's recognizing the position that God holds. But the word is so much deeper than that. There's another thought connected to this word that ties into the celebration that we are a part of even on this morning because this word carries with it not only recognition, but it also carries with it the thought that one who is recognizing God comes with an attitude of gratefulness. There is gratitude connected to uh, this acknowledgement. And I wonder this morning how many people here acknowledge the presence of God, but do you acknowledge it with a grateful heart? If you do, put your hands together and give God praise. I remember years ago being invited to this setting, the President of the United States was speaking and they had us in this room. And prior to the President coming in, they, a person would come and say, the President is coming in in two minutes. It would get us prepared. And then a minute later they would say, the President will be in in one minute. And then when the President came in, out of respect for his position, Everyone stood out of respect for his position and they put their hands together out of respect for his position. Now, I was surrounded by people who were on different sides. Some did not like the president, but they respected his position. While there were others who not only respected his position, but they were grateful for his policies. What the writer in this psalm is saying is that we should respect 
the position that God holds in our lives. And we ought to be grateful for everything that God has provided for us. Hasn't God been a great provider for us? Y'all mighty quiet this morning. Has God been a great provider for us? If you don't mind, why don't you just lift your voice and just tell him thank you. And so here it is in the text. The writer is saying, I'm not praising God grudgingly. I'm praising God gratefully. And that's the way we ought to come to church on Sunday. We should not wait for somebody to try to get a praise out of us. And we praise God grudgingly. We ought to come willing to praise God gratefully. Do I have a witness here? If God's been good to you, why don't you just shout out and say, the Lord's been good to me. So the writer says, I'm going to bless the Lord. I, I'm going to bless, and it's interesting, as you were singing this morning, this, it's interesting, the name that he uses for God in this psalm it, it, is the name Yahweh. It, it's the only name for God that he uses in this psalm, and he makes it clear, I'm going to bless Yahweh, the one who is the great I am that I am. He says, that's the one I'm going to bless. And notice what he says, this blessing, this praise, that I give to him is coming from my heart. He, he says, what I am about to give to God is coming from a deep place. In other words, it's not a shallow praise. Look at somebody and tell them it's not a shallow praise. It is a deep praise. He says, it's coming from deep from my heart. It's real. It has depth through it. It has substance to it. And he says, I've got to tell myself, I've got to remind myself that I will praise the Lord. He says, I'm going to do it with everything that is within me. And he says, I'm going to bless his holy name. I'm going to bless his holy name because he's different. I'm going to bless his holy name because he's separate. He's not like any other God that is out there. God is in this category all by himself. I'm going to bless his holy name from my, from my heart. And then in verse 2, he says, I'm going to bless the Lord, oh my soul. He says it again, and he says, one thing I will not do is forget about all of his benefits. I like the way the New Living Translation says it. It says uh, this way. He says, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. I wonder this morning, is there anybody aware of the good things that God is doing for you right now? Not just what he has done. But what he's doing for you right now. Do you know that the Lord is blessing you right now? Can you just look at somebody and tell them the Lord is blessing me right now? The writer says, I, I, I can never allow myself to forget. I, I, I can never allow myself to forget that I need to praise him for the position that he's in. I need to praise him for the things that he has provided for me. I can't allow myself to forget what the Lord has done for me. And I began to think, what are some of the things that come up in our lives that cause us or that make us forget about how good God has been? Well, maybe sometimes it might be the pursuit of personal pleasure. Somebody say personal pleasure. <laughs> Some of us are having so much fun that we've forgotten all about God. As a matter of fact, some of the fun that we're having right now, it's not building us up. Some of it is killing us. Do I have a witness here? <laughs> But the writer tells him, himself, he says, I can't forget about what God has done for me. I can't allow the pursuit of personal pleasure to cause me to forget about how good God has been to me. Sometimes we forget because of the pain that we've been through. 
sometimes that pain has been so great that all we can see and all we can focus on is the pain in our lives. And it causes us to forget about how good God has been to us. Sometimes it is the pursuit of other people. Maybe not anybody here or watching online, but you do know that there are some people who put people before God. Amen, Dennis. Preach Jeffrey Allen, Dennis. Doing the best I can. So, sometimes we put people before God and our goals are to please people more than we please God. And that causes us to forget about how good God has been to us. But the writer says, I'm never going to forget. I'm going to remind myself. I've got to tell myself. I cannot forget how good God has been to me. Regardless of the pain that I've been in, I can't forget. I cannot allow myself to forget how good God has been to me. And it's interesting here, he talks about I can't forget his benefits. What's interesting when you read what he shares after that, it, 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 it can be capitalized this way. The writer simply says, I can't forget about the fact that God does things for me that I can't do for myself. Do I have a witness here? Can I say that one more time? I can never allow myself to forget the fact that God does things for me that I cannot do for myself. And he begins to list a few things that the Lord has done that he's not able to do for himself. And I wonder before I even just share this list, this quick list, or share it quickly, I wonder is there anybody here who can give God praise for the things that he's done for you that you could not do for yourself. He says, I can't forget this. What, what, what does he do? Why, why bless him? Why, he, he does these things for me that I can't do for myself. Well, well, what are they? Well, first of all, he forgives all my sins. Verse 3, he he forgives all my sins. We, we ought to be thankful for the things that God has canceled. He forgives all of my sins. In other words, I can forgive myself for what I've done. I can forgive others for what they've done to me. But when it comes to dealing with the consequences and the penalty of sin, I need somebody greater than myself to handle that. Do I have a witness here? And so the writer says he forgives me of my sins, which simply means that God pardons me. He he. he he, he, he forgives me. He, he gives me a pardon as it relates to my sins. You know, the Bible tells us in a number of different passages what God does for us as it relates to our sins. Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it all away by nailing it to the cross. In other words, God canceled the penalty of our sins. John tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that the Lord cleanses us from our sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's just. He forgives us of our sins. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And so he forgives us. He, he cancels the debt. He cleanses us from 
our sins. He takes our sins and he casts them away. Psalm 103 verse 12, the writer says he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. But then the psalmist says in in, in Psalm 32 verse 1, he covers our sins. Blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And then the writer in, in Isaiah tells us that our sins will never come up before the Lord again. He says, I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Can I help somebody this morning? If we don't shout because of anything else, we ought to shout because our sins have been forgiven. I wonder this morning, is there a thank you in this house today? Is there a thank you because your sins have been forgiven? Anybody grateful that the debt has been canceled? Anybody grateful that the Lord has cleansed us? Anybody grateful that he cast our sins away? Anybody grateful that our sins have been covered? And anybody grateful here that the Lord will never bring up our sins again? Come on and put your hands together and give God praise. He does something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. He starts with the fact that the Lord takes care of our sins. He says, I can never forget that. He says, but not only in verse 3 does he forgive our sins. The writer says he heals our diseases. Aren't you grateful that God is a great healer? (laughs) The writer in Psalm 30 verse 2 says, Oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help, and you restored my health. Psalm 147 verse 3, the writer says, He heals the brokenhearted. And he bandages up their their wounds. Jeremiah 17 and 14 says, Oh Lord, if you heal me, I'll be healed. If you save me, I'll be saved. But what I'm going to do with the rest of my life is I'm going to praise you even if I have to do it all by myself. (laughs) Do we have any folk who have that kind of attitude today that says, even if I got to praise God all by myself, You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And so he says he he heals our diseases. I couldn't heal myself. He says, but the Lord heals me from these physical diseases. But the Hebrew word means more than just physical diseases. It deals with all kinds of maladies, which means that the Lord can heal us from some spiritual stuff that acts like a disease. Help me, somebody. I'm going to preach this till I get finished, all right? Let, 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 me, let me help you now. Here it is. It's not just physical healing, but it's spiritual healing. Now, don't miss this. The writer says all of our diseases which means some of the spiritual internal stuff that needs to be dealt with, God is able to bring some healing. What are you talking about? Well, can I help you? Maybe some of us need to be healed from having a bad attitude. I didn't think y'all say amen on that. Maybe it's the spirit of rebellion. Maybe it's the spirit of anger. Maybe it's the spirit of malice. Maybe it's some type of sexual issue. Whatever it is, the Lord has the ability to heal. And if you know he has that ability, can you put your hands together and give him praise? Y'all don't like this kind of preaching, do you? He 
he's able to heal the external stuff. But he's also able to heal the internal stuff. Now, there's some folks sitting around you. They may not want to be honest. But they know that the Lord can change your mind. They know that the Lord can give you a new attitude, a, a new way of thinking. Do, do I have a, a, a witness here? Anybody here grateful for deliverance? Put your hands together and just thank the Lord. Come on, put your hands together and thank him for deliverance, for healing. The writer says, I can't let myself forget about what the Lord has done for me. I, I can't do it. He, he, he dealt with the sin issue. He, he brought healing to my life, spiritual, psychological. He, 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 he healed me, but he also says, uh, in, in verse 4, that he redeems me from death. Or, in other words, the Lord is keeping me and has kept me alive. And I wonder, is anybody here who can give God praise? Because you know it's been nobody but the Lord who has kept you alive. In Psalm 116, verses 3 and 4, the writer talks about how death was wrapped around him. He says, oh, but all, and all he saw was trouble and sorrow. He said, but then I called on the name of the Lord, and I asked the Lord to save me, and he raised me up. Anybody here ever faced a death-like situation? And the Lord raised you up and you're still here by the grace of God. Come on, somebody. Give God praise right now. I shouldn't be here right now. But I'm here because of the grace of God. God gave me another day and then another day another chance and then another chance and I'm here I'm standing here I'm in this room today because of the grace of God he says I couldn't do it for myself he says but the Lord did it for me but look at what else he says in verse 4 he says that the Lord he crowns me with love and with tender mercy and what he's saying is the Lord has set me apart and he's given me a special crown. He's given me a place of honor and he's given me victory. But more so than that, the writer says that the crown that I have on my head, it, it, it's a crown that says no matter what, the Lord loves me. And no matter what, the Lord cares about me. Now, can y'all help me this morning? Somebody needs to hear this on today. Can you look at them and tell them the Lord loves you? Can you tell them that? And, and can you look at them one more time and tell them that the Lord cares about you? Come on, say it like you mean it. Y'all not helping me this morning. Y'all not helping me this morning. Somebody needs to know that the Lord loves you. Those who feel unloved, there is somebody who loves you. Those who feel like nobody cares, there is somebody who cares about you. Do I have a witness here? And aren't you glad today that you know somebody who loves you? And that you know somebody who cares about you. Come on and give God praise. I, I, I'm just about finished here. Verse 5 says, he fills my life with good things. In other words, he brings satisfaction to my life. And then he says, my youth is renewed like the eagles. A a and I want to say this. And then I'm going to take my seat. What the writer is saying, I can never forget about the things the Lord has done for me. 
he's been real good. And he says, one of the things that the Lord has done, he says, when I was down and when I was weak and when I was counted out, the Lord stepped in. And what he did for me was he gave me new strength. In other words, when I was counted out, the Lord counted me back in. In other words, when I was counted out, the Lord gave me strength. And I was able to make a comeback. Do I have a witness here? Anybody here ever made a comeback? Uh, when you were counted out because you were down, when you were counted out and folk walked away, the Lord was still there and you waited on the Lord and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And what the Lord did for you, he gave you enough strength to get up and to make a comeback. I'm just about finished, y'all. But this is a good day for somebody who's been down to make a comeback. Look at your neighbor. Tell them today is a good day to make a comeback. Well, they might say, I don't have any strength. Well, the promise in the text is this. The Lord will give you new strength. The Lord will build you up. The Lord will help you. And even though they counted you out, count yourself back in. Can I tell you today, I'm finished, y'all. I never shall forget what the Lord I'm preaching for myself. Yeah, has done for me. My sins, he took them away. Do I have a witness here? When I was sick, he healed my body. Yeah, he brings satisfaction to my life. And when I was down, he raised me up and allowed me to make a comeback. I may be down, but the Lord is able to raise me up. Somebody give him praise. Come on and give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. I never shall forget. I can't let myself forget about the good things that the Lord has done for me. Come on and stand everywhere in the building. Put your hands together and give him praise. If you focus on that problem, you might forget about the good things God has done for you. If your focus is on the wrong things and in the wrong place, places, you might forget about what the Lord has done for you. But when you start thinking about what he's done, every time you think about it, you will bless him. And every time you bless him, you will think about what he's done. It's, it's a cycle. When I think about it, I bless him. I'm not just acknowledging him in the position that he's in, but I'm coming to him with a grateful heart and a grateful life because he's been just that good.
to me. One more time, can you give God praise <laughs> for what he has done? Now, aren't you really grateful today? Aren't you really thankful today when you think about the fact that God has done things for us that we could not do for ourselves? It ought to bless us. I want you to bow with me this morning. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you and pray with you. Maybe there's someone here today. Maybe you have allowed situations to rob you of your joy. Maybe you've allowed people and other things to get in the place where God alone should sit. And maybe you have forgotten about how good God has been. I want to challenge you today. I want to pray with you today. I want to ask God to reset you and to refocus you so that you can be reminded of just how good God's been and so that, so that you can have the joy of your salvation and your relationship restored to you. Maybe you're here today and you've been down. Maybe you're down and you believe that God will not step in again and allow you to make a comeback. Well, if he did it before, he can do it again. And today will be your day. It could be your day. The day that you make your comeback. I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray. Father, here we are in this place. We are so truly grateful. We, we bless you today. We, we acknowledge who you are. We acknowledge your position, your place. We acknowledge that you are God. And we praise you for that. But we also praise you with a grateful heart. Because God, you didn't have to do it. But you've done so many wonderful things for us. And we are truly grateful. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for cleansing us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring about us. Thank you for all that you've done. And I pray this morning for your people. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Allow us to refocus on who you are and all that you've done. Give us a mindset that says, I never will forget. I can't let myself forget what you have done for us. And then we pray this morning, Father, for those who are down and have been down for a long time. And Father, today they need to start. They need to make a comeback. I lift them to you right now. They've been counted out, but God, speak to their spirit. Let them know that you've counted them back in. Let them know that you will renew their strength, that you'll give them new strength, and that their life can be not only different, but that their life can be better. We thank you, God, and we praise you. 